If you're a maker, you know the pain. Wet filament. It can ruin a print and cost you time. But common solutions usually involve bulky bins or boxes that are not standardized, hence hard to find globally. What if you could give your valuable filament a dedicated, long-term dry place to sleep that's universally 3D printable? Today, I'm gonna show you the dry filament rack for Home Racker, a printable system that's rackable and truly airtight. This is the safe haven your filament deserves. Let's dive in and build it. We've conquered tool organization with Gridfinity shelves and drawers. But now it's time for the biggest storage problem – filament moisture. My solution? The Dry Filament Rack. It's a fully 3D printable modular dry box that integrates seamlessly into the home wrecker ecosystem. We're talking standardized airtight storage for every spool. If you're new to Home Record, check out the video in the info box or the link below. But for everyone else, let's crack this thing open. What truly separates this dry filament rack from other DIY dry boxes is two things. First, it's a 100% printable at home. And second, it integrates perfectly into a coherent system, like the wall mounted home wrecker monstrosity. Now, let me quickly walk you through the key features that make this work. First, I designed a simple yet effective closing mechanism. It uses a basic lid combined with a U shaped TPU insert that security seals against the box's rim. This is your first line of defense against moisture. Inside, you'll find a detachable desiccant compartment. It's designed with plenty of slits to maximize airflow and keep your filament at a constant low humidity. Crucially, I designed this compartment to be warping resistant, printable in materials like polycarbonate. This means you can bake the entire compartment in an oven at around 100 degrees Celsius to recharge the silica beads, saving you the hassle of pouring them out. And to make filling that compartment easier, I even designed a small handy funnel to prevent spills. To know exactly when it's time to recharge the desiccant, I included cutouts in the lid for both round and rectangular hygrometers, making monitoring quick and effortless. Since the boxes are opaque, you need to know what's inside. I added detachable label plates. Pro tip, you can simply print these plates using the exact filament inside the box, giving you an instant visual and color-coded inventory. Got wider spools? The standard box fits spools up to 68 mm, but I also designed a jumbo version to account for oversized spools with a width up to 72 mm, which includes a considerably larger desiccant compartment. Last but not least, you can combine the dry filament boxes with all other extensions in the home wrecker ecosystem system, like the shelf to store sealed spools, like this. Moving on. My designs are far from perfect, but they're good enough to share once I use them myself. Since I'm being honest, here are a few things you absolutely need to consider before you start printing these dry boxes. The biggest issue with these boxes is cost. A standard box with all its components and the home wrecker frame uses around 760 grams of filament. However, this isn't a throwaway print. When printed in PLA and factoring in common discounts, you're looking at under 10 eddies per box. Think of it as a small long-term investment for years of perfectly dry filament. I won't lie, there's no customization options this time. The current design with standard and jumbo options should cover most common spool sizes, but if you have something truly unique? Challenge me! Drop me a comment with your spool size down below. Next, the Lazy Man's PC desiccant compartment is nice, but it comes with some risk. If you have an oven temperature that jumps plus minus 20 degrees Celsius like mine, your compartment could deform. Also, baking the desiccant compartment at the PC safe temperature of 100 to 105 degrees Celsius is far less effective than using a more common temperature like 150 degrees, so it takes longer to recharge. The crucial TPU seal is delicate to print. I've only tested Bamboo TPU 95A high flow filament and only in bone dry conditions. I cannot vouch for any other filament or slicer settings working properly right now. And finally, a general disclaimer. 
No dry box keeps filament dry forever. The system slows down humidification and traps moisture with the desiccant. You should still monitor the humidity with a hygrometer and recharge the desiccant regularly. One last quick note on profiles. I often get asked about various hardware and slicer configurations, but I just don't have the time or resources to test them all. So if you decide to use different print profiles or nozzle sizes or speeds than what I've suggested, please do so at your own discretion. But share your experiences with the community. This way we can all learn and improve the design together. Now that I've sweet talked every single warning here, let's move on. I already highlighted the biggest potential hurdle to printing my rack, cost. Since I know that economical thinking is a widespread virtue in our maker community, I want to show you a fantastic alternative that is also fully 3D printable and might save you some filament. I'm talking about the holy grail filament dry box by Moby Motion. And as the creator claims, this is not the greatest dry box in the world. No, this is just a tribute. I see what you did there, Moby Motion. In essence, it does the same job as the home wrecker system, but with three key differences. It needs no TPU, it's cheaper on filament, and it features scientifically backed metrics supporting its capability of keeping filament dry. The trade-off, since it avoids TPU, the lid fitting is apparently a little bit more of a challenge. The creator also provides a stacking system that you might be interested in. Small disclaimer though, I haven't actually printed the system myself, but I found it mention worthy if you find my version just too expensive. I put a link to Moby Motion's models down in the description. Moving on. I've worked hard to make printing the system as easy as possible by providing comprehensive print profiles on MakerWorld. Unfortunately, I did a bad job keeping a bug-free fusion history, so there's no configurable version available this time. Instead, you can choose from three main print profiles. The standard and jumbo profile include everything you need in one shot for a single rack unit. The box, the lid, the desiccant compartment, the crucial TPU seal, and the minimal home wrecker cages. Aside from the standard and jumbo profiles, there is a third profile specifically for the polycarbonate desiccant compartment. It has specific settings optimized to avoid warping and other PC issues. Fair warning, do not change anything on the TPU seal. It requires an aligned seam exactly at the middle of the small side as pre-configured. If you don't adhere to this, the TPU seal either won't fit or it won't be airtight. You have been warned. Aside from a bit of patience, you don't need anything special to print the model. Now, let me quickly walk you through the assembly process. First, press the TPU seal into the lid's channel. Start at one corner and work your way to the other side. Ensure the seams align exactly with the recess in the lid. If you have a blunt knife or a flathead screwdriver, you can use it as help to press it in. Depending on the lid you chose, you can now press in a round or rectangular hygrometer or leave it out completely if you're brave. The very first time you close the lid, it will be very tight. You need to start around one corner and apply firm slow pressure around the edges until the seal fits completely into place. After the initial seating, it gets much easier. And just when I was filming this part, I had a problem seating the lid for the first time. So here's a bit of troubleshooting. If you have a problem fitting the lid, double and triple check the seal alignment. Are there waves which rejuvenate the slit? Use a flathead screwdriver to detach the seal. Inspect the lid for small bumps or loose layer lines and remove any impurities. In my case, it might have been a faulty spool of filament. Then reseat the seal. If it remains uneven, use the seating helpers from this plate and press them in. Let it sit for a while for the TPU to hold the shape. This consistently resolves the fitting issues for me. After the lid finally sits, assemble your basic home wrecker frame using the supports and connectors. Use the two X14 supports for the sides and an X15 support for the back of the cage. A regular box needs five home wrecker units of height, the jumbo needs six. Next, slide your printed box into the cage and use the lock pins to secure everything. Finally, Fill the desiccant compartment with rechargeable silica beads, pop it into the box and you're done. Now you can sit back and observe the humidity drop over the course of the next few hours. I mean, I wouldn't do that because it's boring as hell. Anyhow, that's the basic assembly. You can now scale it up or to the sides like here by building your very own 
custom rack. And that is the dry filament rack. It's airtight, rackable and ready to solve your moisture problems for good. As usual, all models are linked below. But now I want to hear from you. Is it useful for you or just way too filament hungry to even be considered? Also, what other extensions need to be integrated into the home wrecker system next? Drop a comment down below. To follow my design roadmap and suggest new ideas? join our Discord. And if you want to see the next Home Wrecker evolution, make sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, may the rack be always in your favor. The TPU seals printed in this clip were actually printed using a TPU spool, which had already set for six months in one of my dry filament rack boxes. Also, have you seen this exaggerated clip of the wet filament right at the beginning? I love how realistically trippy those AI generated videos look. I had no footage of wet filament. You wanna know why? Because I use my dry filament rack. Now, subscribe. Didn't feel right. From an S to a TH. This thing, this thing. Ugh. I feel like this is gonna be good.